Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Arp Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about comic books I've read, Kickstarters I've backed, and where you can find those Kickstarters to back them yourself. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, today I'm going to talk to you about All New X-Men, Volume 7. I love this run of All New X-Men. Uh, I've been reading X-Men since I was a 90s kid, and, uh, I love this new version because they are they're doing some awesome stuff with it. Uh, basically, uh, the Beast was feeling uh, really bad about the way the X-Men have turned around. Um, Cyclops has gone bad to his own... He's kind of a... Uh, well, I don't know. He's not really a villain, but he's been doing things shady. And uh, I, I lost track of the X-Men anyway, but uh, word has it that... Uh, he uh, killed Xavier while he had the Phoenix Force and so Beast has got this idea like oh man if only he could see if his younger self could see what we're up to now and so Beast is like oh well I'll make a time machine I'll go back in time and I'll get the X-Men from that teenager selves and uh, show them what we've become and so that's what this is all the younger selves are stuck in this world and uh, now they are being trained by Kitty Pride and Magic, and it's really cool. Uh, so this one is written by Brian Michael Bendis, and it has art from Del Mundo, Andrea Sorrentino, Sorrentino, sorry, Marcelo Mialo is the colorist, and Mohamed. Asrar, I should be able to say that because it's one of my favorite artists, but I'm bad at pronouncing. Rain Barredo and Marte Garcia are all colorists. And then Corey Petit is the letterer. Mike Martz and Xander Jarroway are editors. So this is X Men, all new X Men, Volume 7. And uh, in this one, uh, Jean Grey goes on some training with uh, the White Queen, Emma Frost, and so that's kind of cool that Emma Frost is the teacher of Jean Grey now, and there's some Guardians of the Galaxy craziness going on. Really cool artwork in that one. There's some more of that Guardians of the Galaxy artwork. Explosions, just straight up awesome art. Um, yeah, let's see here. And then this, oh my gosh, this is what I love about it, is them just hanging around, doing regular stuff while being X-Men, so it's kind of cool stuff. Um, Magic shows up after uh, getting a bunch of uh, hamburgers at the uh, local burger joint or something, whatever, and uh, it's really cool the stuff they're doing. Then there's this little scene right here. That was really awesome. Uh, so Iceman says something about uh, Iceman says, I salute our new professor on her unbelievable hotness. And then Jean Grey's like, really Iceman? And he's like, what? And she's like, I know what you're thinking and this and that. So basically she's calling him out on uh, on putting up a front because he's actually gay and she's he's like what no I'm not and then she's like really and he says uh, maybe I guess I am I don't know it was kind of cool scene I liked it uh, check it out for yourself for reals um, yeah and then let's see here what else goes on and then there's a little uh, thing going on with some uh, mutants that are hiding out on Utopia and I guess Utopia was a place where uh, mutants were welcome and now it's just a graveyard kind of rundown city so I don't know I've lost a lot of track with what the X-Men are going on I'm, I've only been buying this uh, all new X-Men as far as X-Men go and anything multiple man shows up in so I'm sorry if you're an X-Men fan and 
whatnot, but really, I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's all I've been buying. I've got uh, the new X Factor series in my hold, so I can't wait to read that one. But other than that, I've lost track of the X Men, uh, a lot of the goings on, but all new X Men is an awesome read, so check it out. Uh, the only thing it is missing is The Multiple Man, and that would make it a perfect book. So now that we've moved on from that, X-Men is over with. Now I'm on to Paper Girls Volume 3. Paper Girls is holy crap. Uh, this definitely should be a show. I've heard it might be a show soon. Who knows? Um, so Paper Girls 3 is by Brian K. Vaughn, writer. Cliff Ching is the artist and Matt Wilson on colors and Jared K. Fletcher is the letterer. Awesome stuff. Uh, it doesn't say the editors on that one though or I'd give them a shout out too but oh, holy cow Paper Girls it just keeps getting better and better. This artwork art style is just amazing. I love the art style. I love uh, all the the two-tonedness to the coloring. Um, there's just a lot of things that uh, if you're an artist out there you can aim for because every time I look at it I'm like what am I doing wrong? And uh, yeah, check it out. It jumps to uh, sideways panels for a little while. See the book usually goes like that but flipped it that way. Uh, normally that drives me nuts but it works because it was to throw the reader off kilter for a minute and uh, yeah there's just awesome awesome stuff right now the gang of uh, paper girls is uh, they're stuck in the far far reaches of the beginning of the world and so there's these cavemen they're stealing a baby from someone and they're trying to get it back and uh, yeah just awesome stuff. I'm sorry if you haven't read it yet, if it spoils it for you, but you really should be reading this. You should have read it by now. Uh, it's been out for a good while. I'm kind of late to the game. Well, it's been in my read pile for a, a, a good while. And uh, yeah, so I've got the next one up in my read pile. And there's robots. If, if you're into, uh, well, it's kind of like Stranger Things. It starts out in the 80s, but it jumps, uh, it jumps around times. Um, it goes from the 80s to the 90s to now to way, way back, the dawn of the age of Neanderthals, all that fun stuff. So check out Paper Girls. Uh, it's going to be awesome. It's got a Stranger Things vibe to it, time travel, really cool stuff. Um, yeah. So that's Paper Girls. And next up on my read list, I know this isn't a comic book, but uh, I read Robin McKinley's Sunshine. And uh, I picked this up. Uh, there was this, um, well, my brother-in-law runs a the local library here in Garland, Utah. And uh, every once in a while, they to get rid of old books, they, uh, they show up at an event, and they have a whole table full of books, and they they have a sign up that says uh, fill a bag for a dollar and so you just pick all these random books for one dollar a bag and uh, I saw this one it says pretty much perfect by Neil Gaiman on it in uh, in the uh, quotes there at the bottom and I thought well if Neil Gaiman thought it was uh, pretty much near perfect then I'll check it out uh, because you know he he's made some comics that uh, I'm a fan of like um, Oh geez, now I'm blank. Uh, well, Coraline for one is one big one, and uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, since I'm drawing blanks on that. Anyway, um, the Eternals is one I have in my boxes here. Sunshine here is about a. It's an alternate timeline of our Earth where uh, a couple year, a couple years, or many years into the future. We, uh, vampires have come out to us, but then, uh, they it involved them coming out in, in vampire wars against humans and their own kind, vampires that didn't want to come out. And so, this world takes place in the aftermath. We don't get to see, we don't hear about the, uh, vampire wars other than, uh, 
in uh, in passing when they're referring to how things are now. And so uh, the main character, her name's Sunshine, and uh, she is a baker. She makes cinnamon rolls in the local coffee shop and uh, that's it pretty much it one day she goes out to this lake that used to be her family's and uh, and while she's there a bunch of vampires kidnap her and they drag her through the woods to this mansion on the other side of lo the lake and there's a vampire chained to the wall in there his name is Constantine and uh, the the goal is is to taunt him because they know that he doesn't want to drink the blood of a human but eventually he'll get so hungry he does it anyway even though he doesn't want to kill innocent people and um so every day the sunlight's coming through and uh he skirts around the shadows to keep out of the sunlight from dying and she's still chained to the wall so they it's kind of complicated because they're they don't she doesn't want to get near him because she's afraid to get killed by a vampire and all that but then uh, it reveals that she has some powers of her own and so she takes a pocket knife out of her pocket and she she holds them in her hands and it changes the pocket knife into a key opens up her shackle and opens up his shackle and whenever he ends up carrying her out into the sunlight of all things because it turns out that uh, she can draw her power from the sunlight and make va vampires not die in the sunlight all that it's crazy anyway so then she's at home for a couple months and uh, she finds out she was poisoned by the vampires that kidnapped her and so she's dying and that, that was their way of tracing her tracking her and so uh, he comes back and heals her by giving her his blood after drinking from a deer hall anyway I'm getting sidetracked in this but it, it was a good read it was crazy um, there's other demons and stuff that uh, work for an organ uh, a bureau like an FBI kind of place of that and it it was pretty cool uh, I, I hope my review doesn't strike stray you away from it because it was really good um, yeah, I've never heard of this author before, but I liked what I read, and I'll probably look for more from uh, Robin McKinley. So, that's that. Anyway, uh, sorry about my review there. Got a little sidetracked. Now we're on to mailbox. I got some good stuff in my mailbox recently. Nope, did I put that upside down? So, what did I get in my mailbox today? Uh, today I pulled out Miskatonic High Meets Lovecraft P.I. Awesome, awesome stuff. Um, I am unfamiliar with Lovecraft P.I., but I did order... Uh, I went to his site, his Etsy, and ordered Lovecraft P.I. two trades of it. So uh, I will read those. They're in the middle of my read pile, and these will go to the back. So I will probably read those before I get there. Um, as you notice, I do have multiple copies of Lovecraft P.I. That's because I have a co-worker at work, uh, where I work, and uh, I've got him hooked on the Miskatonic Eyes. So I always get double up for uh, him. So I will, I will pass on a copy to him, and I will definitely put this in my read pile, and let you know what I think about it. I should be getting to Lovecraft P.I. soon. He is from another timeline, but, you know, it's Lovecraft, so time travel and weird openings and portals are par for the course in the Lovecraft. And I got an awesome bookmark from them that says, Special thanks, Gary Brantner of Rentnard Studios Comics, on the uh, bottom of it. So that's cool. It's got Lovecraft P.I. on one side and Miskatonic High on the other side. So that was a cool uh, feature to uh, get in the mail with that. So I will take that to work and I will pass it on to my coworker Brooke. And that'll be awesome. Then I got a duplicate number three in the mail today. And this is one I backed from Kickstarter also. Uh, it's got some prints on it. This is about a world where um, they uh, 
they make duplicate organs to put in you. Um, there was a pandemic, which is kind of weird to read about in our current climate situation. And uh, so, yeah, there was a pandemic. People were dying. And uh, whoever gets sick, they have a thing where they can give you an organ that they created out of nothing, uh, duplicates. And there is a big conspiracy of um, them making money off of this. And when that gets close to uh, becoming public, people start dying because these cloned uh, organs that people have inside them could be shut off at any minute. And the uh, person with it inside them it's bad news for them but uh, the doctor that came up with this method uh, he has nothing to do with it and he's gonna solve it I think so that's where we're at with that one then I also got Jupiter Jet in the mail um, this is from a podcast group uh, the Geek History Lesson um, Jawin uh, Jason Inman and uh, Ashley V. Robinson do a podcast of Geek History Lesson, and they've talked about their own book once in a while, and I thought, oh my gosh, uh, this sounds awesome. I checked out the Kickstarter, and it, it did look awesome, so I got it. There's a bunch of stickers in here with it, all sorts of fun stuff, so yep, I can't wait to uh, dive into that one. This is Jupiter Jet and the Forgotten Radio. This is a trade volume. Oh, it's a number two. Shoot. Do I need to get number one before I can read this? I didn't notice it was a number two. <laughs> so this is Jupiter Jet Volume 2. I better track down Volume 1. Um, I think I do remember them saying, though, that uh, it's a standalone that I didn't... I don't know. I'll, I will have to look into that. So Duplicate and Jupiter Jet. And I also made a stop to my comic shop in uh, Ogden, Utah. It's called Gamers Asylum. You ought to check them out. And I got me The Amazing Spider-Man 9 and 10 volumes. That's my preferred read choice when I'm reading Marvel and DC is trades. Actually, it's my preferred read choice in everything to read the trades. But with Kickstarter, sometimes you got to get the, uh, the single issues. And then eventually you get the trade. So that's how I roll with the Kickstarters. I got Spider Geddon. I and um, let's see Spider Geddon, and I got the next issue of Hawkeye since that's what I reviewed in the last episode was Hawkeye two. So now I got three here from my comic shop, and I finally tracked down. Uh, I bought volume two of this uh, the Age of Apocalypse, and so now I finally got a volume one here. I can finally read that one. So, this was on used for 10 bucks too. It's like thick. Check that out. So, yeah, Age of Apocalypse. It was an awesome one when I was in high school. Uh, so, it's cool that I don't have to carry around the single issues to read that one. And I picked up uh, L. Frank Baum's The Marvelous Land of Oz. This is like the third book in that series, and or second, I'm not sure. They're not numbered on the side. I have to use a, a picture checklist to get these. These are drawn by Scotty Young. That's one of the reasons I, I'm checking it out. And I love fairy tales and whatnot. So that's where we're at with that. Was, this whole haul right here was birthday money. My, I recently had a birthday, and so I've been meaning to get to that comic shop and uh, pick these up. So that was good. Finally get my comic books. Now on to what is in Kickstarter right now that you guys should know about. You guys should go check out. You guys should go back. So what is on Kickstarter right now? Lars and the Lars, the Awkward Yeti, Volume 1. Uh, the Awkward Yeti is a bunch of uh, comic strips about anxiety and shyness, all that stuff. It is where the heart and brain kind of... Uh, originated from so if you're familiar with heart and brain or those comics they are hilarious and uh so you should definitely check out lars and the awkward uh, lars the awkward yeti on volume one um it's on kickstarter right now till december 23rd so 
you have until Christmas Eve to check out Lars the Awkward Yeti Volume 1. It is a good one. It cracks me up. Uh, go to social media right now and look up the Awkward Yeti and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see a lot of funny cartoons, a lot of heart and brain interacting with each other. And uh, that gallbladder, he cracks me up. Because uh, they got the body got rid of the gallbladder because he made stones. So he's like, oh, I made these. And he has a whole handful of stones. It's it's awesome. That I should get a sticker of that. That would be awesome. So Lars, the Awkward Yeti, on Kickstarter till December 23rd. Now, Miskatonic High, which I just talked about because it was in my mailbox. Miskatonic High Issue 9 is uh, on Kickstarter right now. So you could get Issue 9. You can get the Lovecraft PI. You can get uh, all the issues 1, 2, 9. Or you can get the trade and then uh, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Whatever you want. You, there's a whole combo. But it is a huge huge awesome read that you should get right now because Miskatonic High, it's an awesome story. Um, if you're into, uh, I don't know, Scooby-Doo or uh, Archie, it falls in those lines. It's a little bit like X-Men too. Uh, each character, different high schooler has a power that's unique to them and uh, it's, it's really cool stuff. Uh, sorry. I'm getting a little dry there. So Miskatonic High is on Kickstarter till December 17th. Check that one out. It's awesome. Uh, don't take my word for it. I'm sure you can check out the pages in the, the sample pages on the Kickstarter and you'll see for yourself. They've got a cool color scheme and artwork scheme where uh, the colors are kind of muted but then they there's pinks and neons and blues all that fun stuff. So Miskatonic High 9th on till December 17th. Kickstarter. Next up on Kickstarter is Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. It is an awesome story about what if... So Prince Charming kisses uh, Snow White, wakes her up in the middle of a zombie pandemic. And uh, she's a little star-eyed at first. Like, she, she's like, well... You know, I'm, I'm kind of weird and loopy when I first wake up, too. So, imagine waking up to a uh, zombie apocalypse. It'd be crazy. So, the zombie apocalypse is going on right now. There's Rapunzel in there. We just met the uh, the Lumberjack in, in the last uh, issue. So, that's really cool stuff. Check out Snow White Zombie Apocalypse. It is on Kickstarter until December 17th. That's an awesome one. I can't wait to get mine. And uh, now next up is Mirka Andolfo's Sweet Paprika. She's making a statue of Sweet Paprika. And uh, it's a comic book I can't wait to check out myself. Um, as soon as the English version of Sweet Paprika is available, I'm going to get me a trade volume set of that. But, uh, yeah. So, yeah, if you've seen these... She's been tweeting out some awesome pictures of this statue. It looks crazy awesome. Uh, I wish I could afford to turn my things into uh, action figures or statues, but that's where we are. So, Mirka Andolfo's uh, Sweet Paprika statue is on Kickstarter till December 21st. Check that one out. Now, The Last Ember, number one, is on Kickstarter until December 15th. Is that today? Oh shoot, it is 15th. Um, you better check it out fast. Uh, check out Last Ember, number one, on Kickstarter. It is a girl, she's hunted by a serial killer and harassed by bullies, and she finds out she's got powers or something. Check that one out uh, today. If you, The artwork looks awesome on that. They're doing some cool stuff with that. Check out Last Ember, number one, on Kickstarter right now. Or maybe it's not. Maybe it's over by the time I finally get to post this. Um, shoot. I hope not. Uh, sorry. Really crazy thirsty right now. Um, oh, speaking of, that's kind of a good seg segue. Uh, Pop Kill, numbers 3 and 4, the finale of Pop Kill, are on Kickstarter right now. I'm a big fan of the, uh, the soda pops myself. I'm even wearing a shirt that's 
it's not really a soda pop, but you get the idea. It's a soda pop parody. Anyway, Pop Kill is about a a a uh, Japanese mo mogul who uh, who's making soda pop, and uh, right across the street from him, his company is a company that looks almost identical, and it's another person that sells soda pop and manufactures it and the worst part is even as identical as their companies are they are actually Siamese twins who were uh, separated and now they hate each other's guts they're doing the same job they're sending assassins over to kill each other that's why it's called pop kill and they're sending over uh, people to uh, put poisons and stuff that whoever drinks the other brother's soda gets bad diarrhea and doesn't ever want to drink that soda again. It's crazy. The artwork is crazy. So there's this girl and she makes a she's coming up she's a scientist coming up with a formula that is gonna make soda pop last fifty years longer or fifty percent longer as opposed to what soda pop lasts on the shelf now. And so the other guy's like, oh, she's either gotta come over to our side or we're gonna kill her so that she can't make it for my brother's side. And and so he sends over his top assassin to either convert her to the, that side or kill her. And it goes crazy from there. The artwork is awesome. And yeah, it was a good story and it's awesome art. A lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, it's from Jimmy Pal Palmiotti, uh, who you may know from uh, Harley Quinn comics. So yeah, and it's, it's got some awesome art. Devil Pig is making that. I don't, I'm not sure what his real name is, but that's his Twitter handle. Um, so check out Pop Kill on Kickstarter until December 25th, Christmas Day. So treat yourself to uh, some Pop Kill this Christmas. Kickstart it, and you can get issues 1, 2, 3, and 4, the finale, all in one, all in one grab. So go back Pop Kill right now. It's an awesome one. And oh, Thirsty is on Kickstarter right now. Thirsty is by my uh, by my one of my favorites, uh, Pat Shand. Oh, I gotta go get my boy, so I better wrap this up. So Thirsty is on Kickstarter right now till December 30th. It is some not safe for work. It is some erotic stories from Pat Shand who makes a lot of things I like. Um, he makes the Destiny New York stories that I have been back in and loving and yeah so there's a lot of good talent in on this Thirsty. Four intertwined erotic stories so who's what's not to love about that? Um, there's nothing wrong with an erotic themed uh, comic book. I Some of my main favorites are uh, Sunstone, and I Roved Out, and I'm sure there's a, oh man, Familiar. Anyway, check it out. Um, thirsty, it looks awesome. The artwork looks awesome, and uh, yeah, it's on Kickstarter till December 30th. So you have a good one. Well, no, time's running out, actually. So you have until the end of the year to get that one. Saturn Effect Alpha is on Kickstarter till December 16th. That's tomorrow. So you better check this one out right now. Saturn Effect is about, it's a 24 page uh, first issue of eight issues. And it's about two siblings living in colonies out in space. Uh, Earth is looking for other places to live and these two siblings uh, are on the run living in colonies and aliens, all that sort of fun stuff. So I'm excited for that one. The art looks awesome. The storyline sounds awesome. And that brings me to the end of the Kickstarters. Yeah, that one's tomorrow too. Did I say that? Check that one out before it's over. Um, so I have two that are ending really soon. So check those out. And uh, if you have a Kickstarter running or an Indiegogo project or even just an indie comic book, and you want me to check it out, message me on the Facebooks or the Twitters, and you can even email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com. 
and say, hey, uh, I would like it if you talked about my comic book on your show, and maybe I will, maybe I won't. Uh, to tell you the truth, I probably will, unless it's a hateful comic, because um, obviously I have nothing wrong with uh, talking about sexy comics or whatever, but yeah, if it's like a KKK comic or a Proud Boy comic, I'm, I'm not going to bother with that nonsense. I'm not, a, I'm not into hate right now. Um, that's what I love about this Kickstarter stuff, is there's so much out there, so many different viewpoints and uh, stories that people can tell, not a bunch of reboots and stuff. That's, I'm getting a little sick of those, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of different stories and voices out there, a lot of different uh, artists, and it's it's an awesome time to be a fan of independent comics and independent artists. It's a great world of independent creators, and I'm loving it. So I would love to hear what you've got and what you've been working on. So hit me up, say check out my Kickstarter, and I will give it a give it a look, and I will talk about it. I'll write it in my notes, and I will give you a shout out, along with uh, whatever social media platform you gave me a shout out on, I'll say, hey, check out this guy's work. And I've been watching a show on Disney Plus called 616. It's awesome. Uh, basically, it's the Disney Plus version of uh, 616 is the area code for Marvel, as some people may know, and there, it's been some cool episodes, just inside looks on how comics are made and creators, how they got into it, really cool stuff. Um, right now I'm on an episode that is talking about cosplay, so that's really cool. I'm loving it. Uh, it's a good show to watch. And uh, recently they just announced so many crazy awesome things on uh, Disney Plus's social medias, and man, it is a great time to love comics. I mean... Kickstarter is just pumping out awesome stuff, and Disney is pumping out a lot of awesome stuff. Maybe if I cross my fingers hard enough, I can get that multiple man show that I've always wanted to see. Um, so, yeah. Um, check out kick all these Kickstarters. Tell me about your Kickstarter. Check out all these books that I've mentioned today, and uh, I'm going to go get my boy JT. Have a nice day, and see you next time.